we are talking about vision. And when we're talking about vision, it's good to remember all of the individual parts of the eye um, that you would have already learned in lab and make sure you know the path that first uh, light, I'm sorry, first, first light takes and then and after the light, the action potential takes as it travels uh, from out here through all of this structure called your eyeball uh, to the nerve cells here in the retina and then down the optic nerve, optic chiasm, thalamus, and um, occipital lobe. Make sure you know all those structures, right? And we were talking about the blind spot and I drew it for you, but oh, look, someone did a whole lot better job. <laughs> so here you can see that when light goes in, it travels through all those structures we were saying, and then it travels through these nerve cells, that layer of nerve cells to get to the rods, which look like rods, and the cones, which look like little cones. I've got a picture for you. And then if the light is bright enough, they will send an action potential and that action potential gets handed to this cell, that gets handed to that cell, that gets handed to those axons, and those axons dive down here. So imagine if the rods and cones are kind of in this, in this tan area here, and then you can see that there's an area right where the optic disc is. The optic disc, by the way, is the beginning of the optic nerve. Right where the optic disc is, there's no room for rods and cones. So anything that lands there, you can't see. And in your lab, you will actually be working through that um, with your lab manual. Um, so I hope you do that experiment on yourselves. If you don't have a blind spot, it means you are descended from an octopus, and that is very unlikely. So I was showing you this image so that you could see this is what the doctor sees when they look through your eye. And I was complaining about the artist's rendering. The fovea centri sorry. The fovea centralis right here is this area right here. Actually, the fovea is right, right there in the center. The fovea is right there in the center. The optic disc, I'm going to circle that in blue. That's the optic disc. That's the optic disc. The optic disc is the reason you have a blind spot. The fovea is where we do most of our seeing. As a matter of fact, when you're staring straight at something like trying to thread a needle or trying to figure something out, when you're staring at it, what you are doing is you are asking the light that is bouncing off of that to hit right here. All of your peripheral vision is all the rest of this, but that tiny area, just the head of a pin, that's what you do almost all of your detailed seeing with. And the reason that you have a detailed vision there is because at that place in humans, we have just a bunch of cones and each cone has got a private neuron that goes to the brain. In other parts of the retina, even places where there are lots of cones, then a lot of these guys, they all get together and they share one nerve cell. So that's kind of like, if you get a call from me, if my number pops up, you know it's from me because I'm the only one that uses that number. But imagine if you had a whole bunch of cousins in Belgium and the whole family used one phone. So if you got a call from that number, you just know, my family in Belgium, they're Berts. You just know it's a Bert. You wouldn't know if it's your cousin Jerry or your cousin Celeste, right? So same concept, good. Remember the pathway and I've got it written out for you so you don't have to go look it up. The iris. Oh, I love this image of the iris. You know, the iris, that is what we usually think is the colored part of our, our eyes. And humans are supposed to have a, a dark brown or golden brown uh, iris. Those of us with other colored irises like hazel or blue or green, we've got a mutation, right? but it's made out of smooth muscle. And it's actually two different kinds of smooth muscle. There are some smooth muscle bands that are arranged radially, like uh, light rays coming out from the sun. So there are some of the smooth muscle 
that is arranged like that. Those are the radial ones. And then there are circular ones, circular ones. When the circular ones contract, this opening, that opening is called the pupil. When the circular fibers contract, they make the pupil smaller. When the circular ones relax, but the radial ones contract, they make the pupil larger. The pupil is not really a structure. The pupil is a space in the middle of the iris. And the iris controls how big the pupil is. Why? To regulate the amount of light that reaches the retina. You know, those rods and cones, they actually are very delicate. If you shine too much light on them, like if you took a laser pointer and stared at it for a second, you would kill some of those retina cells. So don't do it. Don't, don't, don't test me on that, please, okay? Um, but uh, the way our eye controls the amount of light that gets back there is by opening and closing the pupil, right? Sphincter fibers are the circular ones. Radial fibers are the dilator fibers. There you go. Here's the anterior chamber. I'm showing you the anterior chamber for two reasons. One is to show you that the ciliary muscles are different from the iris, okay? The ciliary muscles, they're also smooth muscle, and the ciliary muscles are also circular muscles. And the ciliary muscles, their job, ciliary, the ciliary muscles, their job is to uh, focus light, to focus the light. Whereas the iris, that's muscle, its job is to control the amount, control the amount of light, All right? So this guy is busy opening and closing the pupil. If it's smaller, less light comes in. If it's bigger, more light comes in. And then these guys, they are busy regulating the focus of the light. And how do they do that? If they contract, if they contract, they get smaller. And when they get smaller, they will release their tension on these things called the suspensory ligaments. And when the suspensory ligaments are loose, and particularly when you're young, your lens will get round, okay? so ciliary contract, contract, then the suspensory fibers get loose, loose, and then the lens gets round. And when the lens gets round, it focuses the light so that you can read fine detail from close up. By the way, what I just said explains why your eyes get tired when you read. Because when you read, the ciliary muscles are contracting. And when they contract, they get small. And that lets loose of the tension on those fibers. And then the lens, it's naturally rubbery. It gets round. If we want the lens to get flat so that we can see off in the distance, we want it to get flat. We need to tug on these, tug on these ligaments. And when we tug, how do we tug on those ligaments? Actually, when the ciliary muscles relax, they get bigger. Just like when the circular muscles of the iris relax, the opening of the pupil gets bigger. And that tugs on the, on the lens and the lens gets flatter. And when you're looking at the distance, the lens is flat and your ciliary muscles are relaxed, which is why we never get tired of looking at clouds. Our eyes don't get tired, but reading our eyes do get tired, okay? Now, what I was just describing is known as accommodation. Is that spelled right? I gotta make sure. Accommodation, and accommodation is exactly what I said. When you are looking at something near, like reading a book, you need your lens, that's the lens, you need it to be round. In order for it to be round, you need these ciliary muscles to contract. When they contract, 
they release the tension there. And if you let go of the lens, the lens gets round. Uh, when you're looking far away, ah, you just relax your ciliary muscles and relaxing them, they tug on the suspensory ligaments and it makes the lens flat or thin. I know it seems backwards. It's always seemed backwards to me too. That's why I'm spending so much time trying to explain it to you. All right. Remember rods and cones. Rods are very sensitive to light, but they only have one color. And so when we are experiencing vision in very dim light, all the colors go away and we kind of just see in black and white or just shades of gray, okay? Cones, cones let us see in color. And in humans, they develop a very, very sharp image. However, they need a lot of light to get them to fire off. That's why cones are very useful for daytime animals like humans, not so useful for nighttime animals like a puma, okay? Rods are found in humans, mostly in the periphery of the retina. And the, the closer you go towards that fovea, the more you see lots of cones. Right at the fovea, it's all cones, no rods. And that's why if something is very, very dim, like you're locked in a dark closet, you're trying to see the way out, you don't wanna directly stare at stuff, you wanna use your peripheral vision. That's not going to happen to you. I don't know why I said that. You're not locked in a closet. This is what a cone looks like. That's what a rod looks like. And that's how they got their names. By the way, do I have time? Let me explain to you why pirates wear an eye patch, right? Pirates did not wear an eye patch because they lost their eyes a lot. Actually, if you were a sailor at a certain period of history, uh, you would always wear a patch over one eye. And the reason has everything to do with rods and cones. Rods are very sensitive to light, but when this pigment rhodopsin get, gets exposed to light, it blasts apart the rhodopsin, and then the cells, they have to rebuild the rhodopsin, and that takes time. Rebuilding all of the rhodopsin will take like a minute, maybe two minutes, for your rods to do it. So if you are a pirate and you are standing on the deck of your pirate ship in the sunlight, then all of your rods, all of their rhodopsin is useless. So now if the head pirate tells you to go down below deck and go get some more cannonballs, if you ran below deck, you'd have to stand at the foot of the stairs and wait for your eyes to adjust to light and that'll take a minute or two. However, if you're a pirate and you wore an eye patch on the deck, and then the captain says, you go down below deck, you would go down the stairs, you'd flip up your patch, and all of those rods are ready to go because you've been protecting their rhodopsin from the bright light. And so you would go, you'd find your cannonballs, and then you'd go back up on deck, flip down your pirate patch, and use your other eye to see in bright light with color. If you just really want to ruin Halloween this year, just explain that to your nephew about why pirates wore an eye patch. But it's kind of cool because it's science, right? There you go. Now, what part of the eye in the human eye provides the most detailed vision? Look at your notes. Check your textbook, pause me, I'm about to tell you, it is not the optic disc. Because <laughs> the optic disc is why you've got a blind spot. Anything that lands there, you can't see at all. It is because of the fovea or the fovea centralis. The macula lutea is right around the fovea, so it's not a bad choice, but the right answer is the fovea. The vitreous, why I have vitreous there twice, I have no idea, okay? <laughs> All right, it's the phobia. What are nociceptors? Check your notes. I'm about to give you the answer. They're pain receptors. Nociception is the experience of pain. All right, next topic will be, I don't know. I'll see you then.